Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order the Danport Plan and Zone Commission meeting today, Tuesday, March 14th. We uh, do not have a public hearing tonight. I do want to ask everybody in the audience to please turn your cell phones off as they do interfere with our communication and our recording. Uh, we will start with our regular meeting tonight since there is no public hearing. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hepner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Snyder. Present. Michaelberry. Present. Johnson is excused. Tolman excused. Ingram. Present. Hepner. Here. Branscart. Here. Reinhardt's. Here. Manus is excused. Garrington. Here. And Stoke. Here. Uh, we have a quorum, a quorum Wait, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tolman. Report of City Council activity, Scott. At the March 8th City Council meeting, um, there were two items that were both uh, adopted. Uh, the resolution for case F5209 being the uh, subdivision for Beckett Place was adopted. And the case F2207, which was subdivision 78, that was adopted as well. Thank you, Scott. Secretary's report. Secretary's report has been moved and seconded as written. All those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none, it will remain. Anything with comp plan, Scott? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. We will move on to zoning activity, the first item of business. Commissioner uh, Garrington. Then will be case REZ 23-01, request of Midwest Fidelity Partners LLC to rezone 1930 and 1934 Division Street and 1711 Pleasant Street from an R4C single family and two family central residential district to a C2 corridor commercial district, and that is in Ward 4. Staff recommends case REZ 23-01 be forwarded in City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the listings and following uh, five conditions, which we'll see, um, and it is so moved. Case REZ 23-01 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Scott? So the first slide we have here is the vicinity map um, for the, what everybody commonly refers to as the five points area. Um, if you're familiar from our public hearing, the <clears throat> the lots north of what's known as Jumping Joey's business are, there's three lots there and four dwellings and those three structures will be demolished to make way for a new development. And here's the zoning map which shows you the R4C section, which is immediately abutting the C2 to the south and the C1 to the west. And again, Walgreens across the street that is also C2. Our future land use map shows this area as commercial node and also as urban corridor. Um, so it, it, it's this rezoning is consistent with what the zoning map envisions for this location. Um, the purpose, uh, as we alluded to in the description, is uh, to redevelop this subject property. Uh, there's three lots there and it would be rezoned to C2 for future development. If approved, the rezoning will allow a car wash or other C2 uses to be developed on this site. Uh, and again, just what the corridor, C2 corridor commercial district, the purpose statement is uh, to allow an orient, uh, corridors to have oriented toward a mix of retail, personal and service, uh, along with arterial collector streets in the city. The C2 district accommodates auto-oriented development, both individual businesses and retail centers, mixed uses as well. The intent is to improve pedestrian environments along the corridors with these districts. This is the concept plan that's been submitted and um, shows you the, let me get a pointer here a second.
it shows you the two access points. There's one off of Division Street and the other is off of Hickory Grove Road. The access point off of Hickory Road is approximately 100 feet back of the intersection. Uh, the very point of the development is where there'll be um, stormwater <coughs> retention. Uh, we have all of our regular public meetings. We had a neighborhood meeting on February 16th. Um, notices were sent to 200 feet to property owners within that area. Um, we also notified of the February 28th Plan and Zoning Commission public hearing, which was held. Um, to date, staff has received two written requests, which are both in support of the request or comments, both in support of the request. Our recommendation is supported by five findings. Uh, the first finding is that the zoning map is consistent. The zoning map amendment or rezoning is consistent with Davenport 2035 land use plan and map, which identifies the property as urban corridor and commercial node. Both classifications allow for commercial use along corridors and edges. The area has been commercially developed since at least the mid 1930s as compatible with UC and CN land use classifications. Finding number two, the proposed C2 general commercial district is compatible with the zoning of nearby property in five points, commercial node, as well as other C2 and C1 zoning, which is abutting. Finding number three, zoning the property, general commercial district, or I'm sorry, Corridor commercial district will not create nonconformities. In fact, will reduce nonconformities. The existing site has driveways that are too close to the intersection. It also doesn't have any landscaping, and there's no place for stormwater collection. So those nonconformities will go away should this development move forward. Mm -hmm. Finding number four, staff concurs with the city traffic engineer's review of this site for traffic impacts for the proposed zoning change and more specifically for the use of this site as a car wash. Staff also concurs with the required right in, right out access point on Hickory Grove Road. And finding number five, there should be a minimal, there should be minimal noise impacts to the adjacent residential area. Any potential impacts to the property to the north shall be mitigated with the installation of a six foot tall privacy fence and landscaping. Staff's conditions then are Condition number one, ingress, egress of Hickory Grove Road shall be right in, right out, as directed by the city traffic engineer. And number two, a privacy fence and landscaping shall be installed along with, along present street, along north right of way line, or the south right of way line, sorry, the north property line of the development between north, north south alley and division street. And that is uh, staff's report. Thank you, Scott. At this time, would the commission have any questions before I ask the petitioner for his statement? Seeing none, would the petitioner like to step forward and explain the project? Please identify yourself. Sure, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm Josh Johnson with Houston Engineering. I saw most of you last time when I was here a couple weeks ago. Um, 39 West Technology Drive, Sioux Falls, if you need an address for the record. Um, with me is also Graham Westa. He's a part of the development team also with MSD, who would be the developer. Um, we talked a lot about it last time, so if you have any additional questions, I'll be happy to answer those. But generally speaking, we're minimizing access points, increasing landscaping, um, <coughs> and trying to figure out better ways to handle stormwater management on the site. So we have an area down on the south corner showing the stormwater management. We're not sure that's actually large enough in itself, but we also do underground storage. Uh, if needed, so that you know, we're not over uh, putting more into the storm system that's currently there to meet public standards. So um, it's a two lane, two pay lane uh, car wash, <coughs> 12 to 14 back bays, and five employee parking stalls. Um, and then we agree with the quick conditions as uh, stated by staff with the right in, right out on Hickory Grove Road, and we have no problem putting the fence up on the north north side of the property to help with landscaping and, and uh, any noise that may be happening. So um, any other questions you have were available, um, but you know, it's pretty self-explanatory and big picture. So we're, we're happy to be here and really uh, appreciate all the support from staff. They've been great to work with. Just wanted to know that 
Um, really, you have good staff taking care of your planning, and, and they've been great to work with. So. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Reinhardt. Uh, this, this is more of a question for Scott. Are they going to explain or, or discuss the chemistry and the water volumes that are going to go down the drains uh, that we're going to have to ultimately deal with in our sewer system? Um, I had those questions, and hopefully they will address those. Yes, so in the packet that we put out um, to all of the commission members were the responses from the city water pollution control plan and also the petitioner. Um, so if you have any further questions other than what's addressed in that application, then we would need to know what those questions are. There, there should be um, a real thorough description of mm -hmm. all the response to all your questions in the packet. Okay. And, and if you don't have it, just let us know. We'll make sure you need it. Okay. Yep. Good. Yep, and that email was on. submitted in to the yeah, packet. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's always a lot of stuff in packets. Too. Yes, yeah. correct. And that's a, yeah, so. Any additional questions? I've got a couple things to say if nobody else is wanting to speak. Thank you for now. Thank you. Um, I've got some traffic questions, and, and I specifically requested a traffic engineer at the public hearing to hopefully get some questions answered. I don't necessarily see my answer or questions related in the, the uh, packet, so I guess if somebody from staff or engineering would like to step up, I do have some questions. Uh, Gary Stoss, the traffic engineer. Thanks, Gary. Um, my concern is, as you well know, two, three years ago, uh, do you have any idea what it costs to rebuild, reconfigure uh, Kimberly and Division, roughly? I know the state participated in it, but it was quite sizable, if I remember correctly, and it took months on end. Right. And I would like to think that, that I would have also liked to have seen a traffic study as to how much that reduced accidents at that site. It has to be considerable. It seemed like any time I drove by, there were flashing lights there. And I'm here to tell you, you've got four lanes traveling in each direction on division, four lanes in each division on Kimberly. To me, you've got an exact duplicate situation going on at five points, plus you're adding three lanes at Hickory Grove. So in my mind, I'm really struggling as to how this isn't going to turn into another division in Kimberley where hundreds of thousands of dollars are going to need to be spent to reconfigure this. And before we get any further, I want to preface this by saying I'm not against the car wash. I'm concerned, and I said that at the public hearing, I'm concerned about traffic. And you've got a very similar scenario. You have 40th Street and the Quickstar entrance at division in Kimberley. You've got north and southbound turning traffic. You eliminated the problem by putting in the median. Now down at Division, you've got Pleasant Street going both directions. You've got just south of that, you've got the entrance exit into Walgreens, which their, their pharmacy literally comes straight out and exits directly onto Division, turning left and right and sometimes darting onto Pleasant. Now you're going to have the entrance to the C2 uh, proposed use. You've got people that don't understand at five points. It's a no right turn on red. I constantly see people turning on red. I don't know what the stack up will be as far as trying to go north on division and turning into the car wash. Uh, this scares, be quite frank, this scares the crap out of me that we're just going to have a huge expense no matter what the C2 use is. Do we have, does, does the city have any traffic studies of in, increasing from a C1 to a C2? Um, is, it, is it a 10% increase? Is it a no percent increase? These are all questions that I would have had at the public hearing, and I don't know that you are prepared to answer any of them. But it's very frustrating to me to see what appears to be a possibly worse scenario at five points than what we had 
and that needed to be fixed and has been fixed and flows very nicely. The other thing that kind of frustrates me in the report is uh, somebody from staff specifically stated at the start of the last, at the public hearing that we are not to consider this as a car wash use, but a change from C1 to C2. Well, why does it state in the traffic study that the fact that it's a car wash shouldn't have any impact? To me, that flies in the face of what our instructions were from staff when we're considering this. Who's to say that five years from now, the car wash isn't making the money they need and it turns into something much more congested traffic-wise? We need to look at the C2 use, not the car wash use. So it frustrates me that it was referenced well, it's a car wash, shouldn't be a problem traffic-wise. I, I, don't, I don't know, Gary, I'm, I'm just really frustrated. And normally as chair, I don't offer a lot of opinion, but I just see, I've lived through the rebuilding of, of Kimberly and Division, because I live out by there. I drive through Five Points constantly, every day, day in, day out. And as much as I want to get rid of the eight or nine sea cans that are illegally stored on that lot, and I firmly believe that the new use of a car wash will clean it up. I'm just scared to death of what the traffic's going to happen, turn into, and what it's going to cost us in a few years when we start piling up wrecks there, just like Kimberly and Division. Feel free to comment if you'd like to. Um, well, Five Points is not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not as busy as uh, Kimberly Division. Do we have a comparison of traffic count? I could get it. I didn't know. Well, that's what I was asking for at public hearing. I, I, I could get it in front of you to you. Right, but it doesn't do <clears throat> us any good at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's flat, especially west of uh, Division. There's definitely a drop off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Division is uh, not quite as busy down there as it is at Kimberly. Um, I, don't, I don't think this is going to make the, the area that much worse. I mean, it'll, it'll add more traffic than the existing site, certainly, but um, I, I don't anticipate something that will cause a lot of congestion. Okay. Well, that is your opinion. I appreciate that comment. I wish I would have had more data had we had representation at the public hearing. It would have been easier for us to make our decisions. Does the commission have any questions, uh, commission, uh, Mr. Stats, Mr. Reinhardt? Yeah, can we maybe table this until we get all the answers to the questions that you've got regarding traffic, traffic flow, and uh, anticipated expense down the road? I'm in agreement uh, with the fact that uh, there's a lot of traffic down there now, and uh, unless we've got some hard numbers to deal with, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to, to, to visit this issue until we're prepared to say yay or nay. Anything is possible. Well, I make a motion that we table it. Before you do that, I think we need to finish the conversation. Okay. Um, I know the petitioner is here from South Dakota. Again, it would have eliminated another trip had we had representation two weeks ago to answer all these questions. Um, I guess at this point, I would like to continue the discussion before we consider a motion. Commissioners, any additional questions at this time? Commissioner Bransberg. I, I share your uh, concern, Mr. Chairman, about the left turns coming off division. I think those are the, the ones that have the most potential for backup into the Five Points area. Um, I do love the site plan in that it's going to beautify that intersection, and I love the landscaping and the water retention. So I do think the overall concept is, is good, and it's going to improve the, the look and appeal of that commercial area. But I do, I would be very curious to know that specific left turn, and if that is considered a problem, especially as it relates to um, its proximity to Walgreens entrance too. What's that going to look like with traffic count? Even existing traffic count, does that look like it would be a problem? But otherwise, mm -hmm. again, I'm not opposed to a car wash by any means, and I'm, I'm very much excited about a landscape parcel there with water retention. That would be awesome. 
Well, my other concern too is, say for instance, you're supposed to take a right turn out of there onto Hickory Grove. I guarantee you people are gonna turn left to get up to five points. So if they don't do that, I see them jumping across and shooting through the lot at Baskin Robbins to come out on, on Locust Street. I, I just see a lot of zigzagging traffic that's not gonna follow any of the rules unless there's some way to enforce it. We don't enforce a no right turn on red right now. Uh, there isn't a day go by that I can go through there and see right turns on red regularly. And if one does it, then the next two or three will follow right along. I just wish we had more answers of how this can work better. Here's the neighbor. This is Laura. Yes, Laura. I, I, I pulled up the Iowa DOT site so I can give you some information on the an, uh, average annual or annual daily traffic count, if you'd like. Sure. Okay, so the, on the east, for West Locust on the east side of Division, it's 22,400. Um, so on Locust on the west side of Division, it's 15,600. On um, Division south of Locust, it's 16,300. On um, Division north of Locust, it's 12,900. And then on Hickory Grove Road, it's 6,800. That is an older one, that's from 2014. Okay, how does that compare to Kimberly then? I'm working my way up there right now. By my rough calculations, you're talking 72,000 cars per day go through that intersection. So on Kimberly, um, for 2021 number, total road way annual average on the east side of division is 19,300. And Total roadway for the west side division on Kimberly is 16,600. And then the division north of Kimberly is 12,900. And division south of Kimberly is 13,500. So I'm actually saying roughly 12,000 less vehicles, somebody can check my map, 12,000 less vehicles at Kimberly and Division than we are at Division and Locust. And that was nine years ago. And, and the one at Division was a lot more years back than current. I, I'm, no, it was at Division, but then it was Hickory Grove. Hickory Grove was 2014. Well, is that the entire right. intersection or just Hickory Grove? So they took by street. So Hickory Grove was that that is older information it's from 2014. However, the div North Division in that area was also from 2014. But um, yeah, that looks like they're all the south part of division was 2018. Okay. But still my point is you're talking 20% more traffic at five points than you are at Kimberly and Division. Um, Even with old data. Yeah. Agree. Okay. I'm just reporting what the numbers say. Okay. Well. Yeah, those those numbers are two-way traffic, by the way. So it's well, I, I would it's assume long. that it's the same way at Division right. of Kimberly. Right. Yeah. I'm just right, but it's you know. still twenty percent less than what we thought was a busier intersection. Yeah, I thought Kimberly was busier. Well, that's why I asked for numbers. I mean, it's a little busier west of the intersection. But, uh, well, I'm more concerned with the intersection and just north of. I'm open to more communication. Does anybody else like to speak at this time? Commissioner, or no, I'm sorry, Scott. 
Um, I guess I would like to maybe hear from a traffic engineer what he thinks about the level of service that we have now at this intersection. It appears that it's handling the traffic that we have at the, t the moment. Um, and whether or not the increase from one, you know, if we had Jeff and Joey's business there, that was there. So we're adding some additional land area. I think it's 0.4 acres uh, of land area. So whether that 0.4 acres of land area is going to generate traffic that's going to push this intersection into the danger zone and what is the danger zone. Um, I did want to also mention that the staff report we did mention the car wash in there because that's on everybody's mind. That's the concept plan that we've been submitted. So we wanted to make sure that people understood that Gary's analysis took into account the car wash, but also general C2 uses as well. I appreciate that, Scott. But I go back to my original statement that I would like to see an accident report comparison. I mean, look at what we had to spend a division in Kimberly to eliminate the accidents and the traffic flow didn't change. I mean, the traffic amount didn't change before and after the reconfiguration where you put in the medians north and south of Kimberly on division to eliminate cross turning. We're basically repeating what we had, but now we're doing it with three arterials instead of just two. I assume that Hickory Grove is an arterial. I could be wrong. The collector, I believe. Okay, but, well, pretty, but it's still got 6,000 6, vehicles, 7,000 mm -hmm. vehicles. I, I, I think we didn't learn a lesson out of Kimberly if we do this, and I'm concerned about it. But, Commissioner Hepner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this question's for the developer. I was just curious in your pro forma your business case, <coughs> what were your numbers, annual numbers, monthly numbers? Did you have any information like that to, to share with us? Good evening. Uh, Graham Moistra with the Northwest Valley Partners, um, 1610 South Minnesota Avenue. I can get you a pro forma if you want. Uh, I don't need your pro forma. I was just wondering how many units you were seeing going through the On a day-to-day basis, you're yeah, saying? Correct. I'd say anywhere between two and 300. With those traffic numbers. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. all I need. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's thank you, good. Commissioner Hefner. Commissioner Reinhardt. If I remember correctly, we talked about the potential at the last meeting of 15 to 20 cars an hour during potentially <coughs> peak periods. Is, is that number still good? Or are you talking about a lesser number? 15 to 20 cars an hour on a peak period. I keep thinking about how busy that intersection is on the weekends. And I would think that people want to get their car washed on the weekends. So that's good. In my estimation, add 15 to 20 cars an hour into that, uh, those converging intersections. I'd say on a day to day basis on a doesn't run during weather or weekends. <laughs> Uh, you're looking at the 15 or 20 coming to a weekend, you might have the 20 to 30. An hour? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Reiner. Any additional thoughts, questions, comments? Commissioner Hefner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I guess, Paul, just to, to follow up with you, um, I'm not going to drive to that car wash from my house. I'll probably stop in as I'm driving by if I'm on an errand or something like that. So I don't know that I want to need to factor in some of that last minute decision making. I'm just thinking about all the residential properties that are around there that may will be this car wash will be more convenient. True that, yeah, for sure. Than driving to some of the other ones that we've already approved. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So what we've noticed from our uh, studies that we've done in the past is typically people aren't going to go out of their way to go to our car wash. It's going to be an errand type deal. If you're going to run to the Walgreens to CVS, you're going to pick up prescription, well then you're going to go get a car wash after. It's not going to come all the way from across town. And get a okay. Car wash. And that's, that's baked into the number that you gave us. I Correct. Guess. Okay. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner Hefner. Any additional comments? 
Seeing none, do we have any motion to vote or Commissioner Reinhardt's? Are we at a point now where I can make a suggestion to table this until we get a little more information? Go ahead, Scott. Um, should or if the commission tables this, I guess staff would like to know specifically what questions to address before the next meeting. Uh, we tried to relay our, the concerns that were mentioned at the public hearing to our traffic uh, engineer and apparently we didn't do a good enough in-depth job of what your concerns were. So I would really appreciate knowing exactly what kind of questions need to be answered before the next meeting. Well, and I fully agree with that. Uh, I specifically asked for traffic counts and I don't see that anywhere. You know, I just, hang on, Commissioner Reinhardt, it's Commissioner Schneider. Traffic engineer, please. So based on the conversations that we've had here, um, do you still feel confident in the uh, you know, decision for the entrances and exits? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. See, no additional questions. Commissioner Reinhardt, if you would like to make a motion. Um, based on the information that, that I just got today where we're potentially 20 to 30 cars an hour and all the congestion that we know already exists, I would suggest that we table it until we take a look at what the impact 20 to 30 cars an hour will make on that intersection. So I make a suggestion that we table it. We have a motion for tabling. Is there a second? I'll second. You'll have to add that column, Tom. That will, that will eliminate any additional discussion at this point. Um, roll call, please, on, on a motion to table for one cycle, I assume. Yes. Gibbs got enough time to figure out the numbers. What? What the impact of well, 20 to 30 cars Scott, an hour? I specifically want to know what we're supposed to look up. How about we put together a list and email it to you? I will do that. I will discuss with the commission after the fact and get that to you tomorrow. So this is a vote to table. This is a vote to table for one cycle to allow staff to provide additional information. Would our attorney like to speak? You probably don't want to have that discussion because then you're running afoul of open meetings. Well, so, I realize what you're saying. Then how do we do that? Do we get all the questions now? Well, what I've heard is you want traffic counts. We want traffic counts. We want accident counts. We want accident counts. I haven't heard anything else. So well, I, I guess speak now. Or okay, we'll... let's do that then. I appreciate that. Uh, I think we want to know about access points and... Uh, well, we have the access well, points. We have planned access points. Is there a possibility of a different access point that would reduce the traffic uh, turning on division, perhaps one up on Pleasant? Um, the right in, right out. Um, from the picture, I there sometimes is a, um, a median to keep people from making a left turn in, uh, and I don't see that on, on the drawing. It may be in the plan. Sure. Sure. So, um, this plan was the original plan that was submitted for discussion. Sure. Um, there have been no revisions to it based on staff comments to this point. Okay. Um, as of this staff report, the right in, right out on Hickory, um, we, we haven't even had a chance to really okay. provide a new plan. Um, so, we assume that given this is a rezoning, and a alley vacation, which you'll see next as part of this discussion, um, that as we did our detailed site plan design, we would work with traffic or the city engineer on those details of the okay. design. So we're in agreement with the right in, right out on uh, Hickory. Uh, when we started talking with staff about this plan specifically, um, 
we were actually told not to put any access points on Pleasant, uh, given the residential nature of that street. Um, so there are some things that this plan represents based on conversations with staff. Um, in terms of access on division, you know, the good planning practices, those driveways line up, which is sort of how we aligned it with uh, the Walgreens to the east. Um, spacing is, I mean, we know there's a turn lane as you come south on division. We wanted to stay out of that, on that <clears throat> access point. And uh, in reality, this site really needs, well, I don't care if it's a car wash or what the purpose is, it really needs two access points, one division, one Hickory Hill that it works. But we're also closing, whether that alley gets used a lot or not, we're also closing the alley, which creates better spacing across that uh, Hickory Road to the next to the next access point. So we're really trying to make the access points on all levels better with any plan that's proposed. So um, hopefully that helps with how we got to where we're at um, and discussions we've had through this. So. And, and I understand your questions on traffic when I, we totally understand it has nothing to do specifically with the car wash. Um, I mean, you put a Taco John's, put a, uh, uh, any fast food in here, you're going to get traffic. Um, so I'm just saying that's how we got to where we're at. These I'm curious, areas. have you, after the public hearing, did you take my recommendation and go up to the intersection I'm referring to and see the changes to that intersection compared to... Um, I did not go up there, but we didn't okay. have time to make it up there. That's fine. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I, I take the word that it's made a big difference. So It has. Yeah. It has. So. so what have we got so far? We'd like to know a little bit more about access points. We want to have, as best we can get, accurate traffic counts of both intersections. Accident reports between prior to the change at Division and Kimberly and current. And to be honest with you, I would like a comparison. Why? I mean, we've already been told that there's less traffic at five points when in reality it appears as though there's more. Why is this no different than Kimberly and Division? I would really like to have a study as to what, why this is different. Because I sure don't see it, especially when you throw in another uh, collector Street. Go ahead, Scott. Just thinking about the nature of zoning and the nature of the area out at Kimberly, um, Five Points has always been a traditional, more pedestrian-oriented, where you have more people on the street. Uh, you have shops that have zero lot line setbacks. You don't have ditches. So when you're out at Kimberly, the speed limit is higher. People mm -hmm. feel comfortable speeding. At that and intersection, I they're, think it's they're the same. going, you know, they don't have the business right along the street the way you do at Five Points. When the businesses are closer to the street, it's been proven that it slows the traffic down. Also, speed limits help with that. But so that's to me one of the differences between these two locations. I don't know that they're how much com comparable they are. Well, um, but we still have more traffic 20% more traffic based on old numbers. So, are there any additional Commissioner Reinhardt? The other question I, I think that we need to address is the potential for cars stacking up, waiting to turn into the facility, much like the, what we get right now at uh, on uh, 53rd in that area by uh, Chick-fil-A uh, people waiting to get in and waiting right. to get out. So the petitioner at the public hearing stated 10 to 12 spaces for stacking are available. Uh, if you want more detailed information than that, then we would need well, to know. Well, but I understand that for the actual business. But when you, if you've got some, if you got cars waiting to turn in because of, let's just say they're heading northbound, you got cars heading southbound. Now you got a light change at five points, and you got a couple cars waiting to turn in. So now you got traffic either from Locust Street or Division Street stacking behind them that are not going to the business that back up into the intersection. That's our concern. And that's what the traffic engineer has looked at. So Gary did have those numbers prior to this meeting, and that's what his opinion was based upon, those numbers. 
But again, I question whether it takes into account the actual traffic flow of cars that are not entering the business, but not allowing cars to turn in. Just like we had at Walgreens. You would have people wanting to turn into Walgreens, going north on Division, stacking up into Kimberly because there's traffic trying to go around them, but there's nowhere to go. That's what we're concerned sure. about. That's a good question. I would trust me. I would I've ask lived that. It. I've seen it. I would it. ask that of the traffic engineer. Over and over and over, I've seen it. That's why they changed Division in Kimberly. There was too much stacking, not of cars that want to go to business, just that want to pass through, through traffic. That concerns me the most. I think we've got all of our questions. Now, we will take a vote. Do we want to table this for one cycle? Yay or nay? Go ahead, Commissioner Hefner. Snyder. No. Michael Berry. Nay. Johnson. Excused, Holman excused, Ingram? I'm not voting, unless there's a tie. Governor, no. Bransgard? No. Reinhardt? Yes. Garrington? No. Stelk? Yes. It does not pass. Okay. In that case, we will go back to the original uh, motion. Is there any other further discussion before we take a vote on the original proposal? Seeing none, are you ready, Commissioner Hefner? Roll yep. call, please. This will be on the uh, presentation of the, of the staff for approval, changing from a C1 to a C2 at this location. Snyder? Yes. Michael Berry? Yes. Hefner? Yes. Bransgard? Yes. Reinhardt's? No. Garrington? No. Stelk? Yes. It passes. Thank you, Commissioner Hefner. We will now close case REZ 23-01. We'll move on to subdivision activity. We do not have any old business, but we have some new business. Commissioner Hefner, could you please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've got a couple cases tonight. First, ROW 23-1, request of Midwest Fidelity Partners LLC to vacate the alley right-of-way located west of Division Street between Pleasant Street and Hickory Grove Road. Staff recommends the City Plan and Zoning Commission accept the listed findings to vacate the alley right-of-way located west of Division Street between Pleasant Street and Hickory Grove Road in case ROW 23-01 to City Council with recommendation for approval subject to the two conditions, and I so move. Case ROW 23-01 has been moved and seconded for discussion, Scott. So hey, the staff Commissioner report. Ingram. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry to pause. Um, I have the vote count as five yeses and two no's for the rezoning, is that correct? Correct. Yes. That is correct per Commissioner Hefner. Um, Mr. Hyer, right now we're, that was not a quorum of the commission. Quorum would be, or the We have a quorum. Of yeah, they have a quorum and that was, no, that, was, that was a majority of the members present. That's all we need is okay. a majority of the members present. Okay, just making sure. Yep, ZBA is different. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Mr. Heyer. Sorry. No problem. Go ahead, um, Commissioner Hefner. No, I was about to give my report. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Scott. We yes. got a second, yep. so we're ready for Scott. Yes. yes. Yep. So the, uh, the, the alley that's between Jump and Joey's and the three lots that have single family and one conversion duplex, and on the other side, on the west side, is the Walks used car sales. That's the alley that's subject to vacation, um, and it's three thousand five hundred and eighty square feet. Uh, these two images here show you uh, the alley. Uh, we have had comments back from utility providers. 
and we'll get to those in a minute. Um, here's the zoning map, which you, you're familiar with, we just discussed it, and the future land use map. And um, I should mention briefly how this land is being utilized. It, it, it helps the uh, new development meet setback requirements and buffering requirements um, along that west property line. Um, we did have public uh, neighborhood meeting. We had a public uh, hearing as well on the 28th of February. And those comments were received. Um, the utility companies um, have have some minimal needs. And so our findings, uh, finding number one, the existing public right of way is not required for city purposes. Finding number two, utility easement would preserve the rights for utility providers and maintain existing and future infrastructure. Finding three, economic vitality would be strengthened in a stressed commercial neighborhood. Um, so our conditions, uh, vacating the alley is contingent upon the approval of case REZ 2301 and condition number two. All existing utilities located in the right of way, which are subject to vacation, shall be granted a blanket utility and access easement for the maintenance of such utilities. That it, Scott? That's it, correct. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions of staff at this time? Would the petitioner like to step forward again? Again, Josh Johnson with Houston Engineering. Um, not much to say. We've had a lot of discussion on this already. I was just going to say that we're uh, acceptable with conditions. In, in reality, this uh, alley would go half and half. We would get half of it in an adjacent property and we get the other half. So uh, the intent is green space. Um, nothing more than that. Didn't make sense to have the alley with our proposed development and talking to staff. It seemed to be a logical option. So if you have any other questions, again, we're always here. So just let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Question for staff, I understand vacation right away. Um, is there an option, should the service station, should Wallach's decide they don't want half of that, that it could go for their greenway, their additional landscaping? Yes, that's my understanding. If the abutting property owner does not want it, then the other property owner can get that. And that's... I just don't see what half an alley would do for him <laughs> no. as opposed well, to... Well, so the one good thing about the half of the alley for the applicant or the, uh, the people on the west side is their building is, doesn't meet setback right, right. now. Right, you're correct. So if they get that half of the alley, their building becomes more conforming with regard okay. to setback. I appreciate that clarification, Scott. <clears throat> Any additional questions from the commission? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Roll call, please. Snyder. Did you see Schneider? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Michael Berry? Yes. Hefner? Yes. Bransgard? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Manis is gone. Excuse Garrington? Yes. And Stoke? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next case tonight. Mr. Chairman, is F23-03, request of Dan Dolan Homes, LLC, for a final plat of Birchwood Grove, second edition. The 42-lot subdivision being a replat of lot 14 of Birchwood Grove, near the terminus of Lakeview Parkway and Ravenwood Lane on 7.4 acres. Staff recommends the Plan Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F23-03 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the six listed conditions, and I so move. Case F23-02 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Scott? Oh, I'm sorry, I did. Right. You did. You skipped over F23-02. Let's back up. Okay. Thank you. They're in the wrong order. Sorry about that. So I'm going back to case F23-02, request of Payne Properties LLC for a final plat of Payne Properties Edition. The two-lot subdivision is located at 1814 East Locust Street on 1.7 acres. Staff recommends the Plan and Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F23-02 to the City Council 
with a recommendation for approval subject to the two listed conditions. And I so move. Second. Case F23-02 now has been moved and seconded for discussion. Scott? So the purpose of this, excuse me, the purpose of this plat is to, um, there's two buildings on this site. Now commercial sites can have more than one principal building on them. However, this, the new property owner would like the ability to separate those properties out. So they've asked to have a subdivision of two lots, uh, one, one building per lot is what they're recommending. And they have provided, one concern of ours was preliminary that, to make sure that they had access easements for the property owner to the east and the property to the west. And so those easements are in place. Um, the zoning is C1 on this property for both buildings that they wish to have subdivided and the property to the east. To the west is a multiple family uh, future land use is all general, residential general, um, and this is the plat here. <coughs> so our findings are that the plat conforms to the comprehensive plan. The plat uh, prepares the area for future development or sale. Uh, the plat with staff conditions will achieve consistency with subdivision requirements. And our conditions are that surveyors sign the plat and that utility providers sign the plat when their easement needs have been met. And that the report. Thank you, Scott. Commissioners, any questions at this time? Seeing none, would the petitioner like to step forward? Is the petitioner present? Hello. Hi. My name is Morgan Payne. And Could you speak up a little, please? I say my name is Morgan Payne, and I inquired the property that my survey is prepared for use. Any questions that you might have? Commissioners, any questions of the petitioner? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Final call for questions. Seeing none, roll call please, Commissioner Hefner. Snyder. Yes. Michael Berry. Yes. Hefner, yes. Ranscard. Yes. Reinhardt. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Stelk. So, oh, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Final okay. case. Let's go back. Now. Do this one again. Yes. F23-03, request of Dan Dolan Holmes, LLC, for a final plat of Birchwood Grove, second edition. The 42 lot subdivision being a replat of lot 14 of Birchwood Grove near the terminus of Lakeview Parkway. Ravenwood, Ravenwood Lane on 7.4 acres. Staff recommends the Planning Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F23-03 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the six listed conditions. And I so move. Case number F23-03 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Scott? Um, so I'm sure you all remember the Sophie Foster rezoning. Yes. Um, this is finally one of the last pieces to be subdivided for that. Um, it abuts the properties to the south there is East 49th Street and on East 49th Avenue. I'm sorry, East 49th Court and East 49th Avenue. Um, the property is zoned multiple family. Um, however, if I remember, there's a restriction that they can only be duplexes or single family on where they abut the property to the south. Um, residential general is the land use map. And here shows the plat. And there's 42 lots there and an out lot. Um, we have a couple of conditions, minor conditions. Um, so our findings are that the plat conforms with comprehensive plan. Uh, the plat prepares an area for future development and the final plat with our conditions shall achieve, achieve consistency with subdivision requirements. And staff conditions are surveyors sign the plat, utility providers shall sign the plat when their needs have been met, and that the title description shall be amended to read Birchwood Grove second edition being a replat of lot 14 of Birchwood Grove's addition to the city of Davenport, Scott County, Iowa. And condition four, Curve number nine, 
which is on the cul-de-sac. It shall be revised to meet SUDAS backup curb radius of 50 feet, which is a requirement. Uh, condition number five, um, that the general applicable notes from Birchwood Grove shall be carried over as they apply. And that a label, stormwater detention and access easement shall be placed on outlot A. And that's our report. report. Thank you, Scott. Commissioners, any questions? Seeing none, would the petitioner like to step forward? Is the petitioner present? Seeing none. A little disappointing. Would anybody like to speak in favor of or opposition to this? Seeing none, final call for questions. Seeing none, roll call please. Stoke. Yes. Garrington. Yes. Reinhardt. Yes. Ransgard. Yes. Hefner. Yes. Eichelberry. Yes. And Snyder. Yes. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, Thank that's you. all I've got this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Hefner. That will conclude subdivision. Any future business? Staff's not aware. I don't know if Laura is still on, but I'm not aware. There might be a yes. subdivision or two Oop. that we're coming up I with. hear Laura. Yes. Hi. Um, we have one subdivision plan for our April meeting. Thank you, Laura. Any communications or additional business? Seeing none. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjournment, signify by aye. Right. Opposed, same sign. We are officially adjourned. Thank you for your attendance.